to Chaucer and medieval literature. Yes. Well, okay. So Chaucer and medieval lit. Um, you know, it's tempting to kind of think about medieval literature as kind of like I mean, boring for sure and sort of unsophisticated, I think, is sort of a common thing that we think about it. Um, and, and I had a professor in a Chaucer class once who kind of pointed out that, you know, no, they're, they're not stupid. Medieval, medieval people aren't stupid. They're, they're smart people. Um, and their literature is interesting and it's worthwhile. It's, it's just different from ours. It just looks different. They're like from hundreds of years ago. You know, they would probably judge us for Twitter. So I think we should, you know, keep it in perspective. They're just, they're doing different things, but they're just as smart. They're just as innovative and interesting as, you know, as we are. Um, and, and one way to kind of really see this is if you really read and kind of get into Geoffrey Chaucer, because um, he's a great example of all the cool things that people in medieval lit do. Um, and he's really, he's considered kind of, I mean, you often hear that Shakespeare is sort of the father of English. Chaucer's kind of another father, an earlier father of English. Um, you know, he's really kind of, he's the original written source for like tons of words that we use. Um, and he's also like really, he's a funny guy, you know, like he's got all sorts of, he's got sex jokes, he's got fart jokes, he's got it all. All the things that we think are funny, he thought was funny too, because he was great. Um, and so we're just, in this video, we're just going to, you know, take a look at his life, we're going to look at some of his major works. Um, and then what we're going to do, which is going to be gonna be really good, is we're going to sort of take a look at how to approach reading Middle English, which is the language that, that he wrote in. And it's just sort of an ancestor of what we speak today. It's very related. You can do it. It's just, just a little tricky. Um, you know, so let's see, Chaucer, he's born around 1343. Um, people don't exactly know when, so that's why we say around. Um, and if you ever watched, if you've ever watched A Knight's Tale, which is <laughs> one of my favorite movies, um, that's one representation of, of Chaucer. He's played by Paul Bettany. Um, he turns up, he's naked on the road. Um, he likes to give sort of extravagant speeches introducing Heath Ledger's character, the knight. Um, and it's, it's really, it's so good. I Watch it if you haven't. But um, the thing to remember is while it sort of is a representation of him, it, it, it doesn't have much to do with his biography, but it does reflect this idea that Chaucer really did everything. Like, he was a page for a nobleman. He fought in the Hundred Years' War, like over in France. Um, he kind of like wandered around Europe, just like touring around, which was a lot harder back then than now. You can just take Ryanair. Um, you know, he worked for the court. He studied law. He was actually ended up being like in charge of the port in London. Like he was like in charge of customs. So he, he did everything. Um, and of course, he also was a writer, which is what kind of how we know him today. Um, and you know, and, and unlike you know a lot of people that we talk about, he actually was really famous and well recognized at the time f for writing. I mean, he was sort of called upon to just to write stuff. Like this guy asked him to write a eulogy of of his wife. Um, that turned into the Book of the Duchess, um, which actually also gets a shout out in A Knight's Tale. Um, you know, <laughs> Paul Bettany, who plays Chaucer, introduces himself. You know, Geoffrey Chaucer's the name. Writing's the game. Chaucer, Geoffrey Chaucer, the writer. And like they don't know what a, they don't know what a writer is because they're <laughs> ignorant. Um, and then he says, you know, you've probably read my book, The Book of the Duchess, you know, so it, 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 it's in there, you know, <laughs> again, not accurate, but all the, all the pieces are there. Um, and he's also, he's famous also for works like, like the Parliament of Fowls, um, fowls meaning like birds, so this is like about birds that all talk to each other, um, and, and a poem called uh, Troilus and Cressida, he, he writes a version of that, Shakespeare does too, but Chaucer, Chaucer did it first. Um, you know, at some point, like he's, He's writing all this stuff. At some point, he actually gets awarded a gallon of wine a day by King Charles III. So, like, big deal, guy. Um, and it was probably people think it's probably as a reward for for writing. You know, so like literally you know, every day. You know, it's kind of a good deal. Um, you know, but he's really most famous now, I think, for um, for his Canterbury Tales. That's kind of his big work that he, you know, gained the most recognition for, at least nowadays. Um, and they're written, you know, they're all, they're all poems. You know, we, re we refer to them as tales or stories. They are actually in verse, they're poems. Um, one of them is actually called The Knight's Tale, but it has, like, absolutely nothing to do with the plot of the movie, so do not be confused. Um, and I, I promise this is the last time I'm going to talk about A Knight's Tale. Um, but <laughs> he presents, a, you know, he, Chaucer, he presents a series of these, these tales, these poem tales that are told by a bunch of pilgrims who are all kind of headed out to the Canterbury Cathedral, um, which is this big pilgrimage site in, in England at the time. Um, and you know, all the pilgrims kind of have different personalities and they have different jobs. Um, 
And, and you know, some of their stories can get like pretty raunchy, so like, you know, that's, that's a reason to read it. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later. But, um, you know, so it, and the reason that Chaucer kind of can do this is because, you know, we mentioned before he was so, did so many different things, you know, he got really familiar with all sorts of different kinds of people. So, you know, he can kind of write all these different personalities. Um, and, you know, the, the, the Canterbury Tales, like, they're probably unfinished. That's something that, that we, we think. Um, they're organized into sort of a bunch of fragments. Like, the actual text itself is lost. We kind of reconstruct it from a bunch of different manuscripts. Um, and, and he started working on them like relatively late into his career. Um, and so, you know, they might, may or may not be finished, but he was definitely, this is one of like the, sort of the last things that he did. And he, he died in 1400. Um, so, that, so that's Chaucer's life. Um, and that's sort of, you know, just a way to kind of think about, uh, think about what, what you're about to read in terms of, you know, who he was. Um, but what's also really, really important in terms of approaching Chaucer is, is, is this issue of the language and the issue of, of, of how to approach something that's written in Middle English. And, um, you know, and, and Chaucer's really part of a movement in the Middle Ages um, that, that was going on all over the place to, to write in what's called the vernacular. Um, and what that means is just the language that people speak. So like, you know, in modern day, like the vernacular just, it is English. Like there's no difference between the vernacular and like what you know, literature is written in or what sort of important people talk in. But at the time, like people, important people talked in Latin and spoke and wrote in Latin. And so the idea that you're going to write sort of in the language of the people is something that is sort of a new idea. And he wasn't the only one that was doing it, but he's kind of a big, you know, early example of this. Um, and, you know, so it's, it's, but it's also important, really important to note that his English, so this is the English of around, you know, 1100 to 1400 or so in, in, in England, um, it, it's called it's called Middle English. You got Middle Ages, Middle English makes sense. It's not the same thing as Old English. This is a really important distinction. Um, that's going to be more around like 800 AD. We're kind of talking more like Dark Ages than like you know High Middle Ages. Um, and this this is like a favorite quiz question. So like, do not be fooled. Old English. Chaucer wrote in Middle English. He did not. Even though it's even though it is old. It's, it's Middle English, Old